ME-CFS is a debilitating chronic illness that affects multiple body systems. People living with it often find themselves unable to live, work, and play the way they did prior to the illness. In some instances, people find they are confined to bed most of the time. Healthcare professionals make a diagnosis based on the patient's medical history and evaluation of the patient's symptoms. There are three core symptoms of ME-CFS. Number one, a patient with ME-CFS cannot do activities that were normal before their illness began and will have severe tiredness that doesn't get better with rest. Number two, the patient's symptoms will get worse after any kind of physical or mental activity that wasn't a problem for them before. This is known as post-exertional malaise, or PEM. And number three, sleep problems that can include not feeling rested even after a full night of sleep, trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. People also need to experience either problems with memory or thinking, or else symptoms that get worse when they stand or sit upright. Healthcare providers should also rule out other illnesses that could be causing their patients' symptoms. People diagnosed with ME-CFS work closely with their healthcare provider to address the symptoms that are most troubling to them or that have the greatest impact on their lives. There may be things they can do that bring them some relief from their problems. It is also a good idea for people with ME-CFS to see their healthcare provider regularly to address any new symptoms that may develop or to learn if any new treatments may be available. Currently, there's no lab test that diagnoses ME-CFS. Unlike many diseases where a simple blood test will tell you if you have the disease, ME-CFS is much more difficult to diagnose. As we've discussed, a physician or healthcare provider can diagnose ME-CFS by reviewing the patient's symptoms and medical history and doing appropriate testing to rule out other conditions. And it's possible that ME-CFS has more than one cause. Some patients report they had a common infection like the flu and then just never fully recovered and instead developed more long-term symptoms of ME-CFS. An infection could trigger ongoing immune damage or an immune system that is weakened. Physical or emotional stress sometimes precedes ME-CFS symptoms. A stressful event can impact the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which can result in an imbalance in the body's main stress hormone, which then leads to changes in the person's body chemistry. Sometimes we find several members of one family develop ME-CFS, so it's possible there may be a genetic component or a shared environmental exposure.